Hello people, so I have built a power plant that turns stone into electrical energy. Um, quick disclaimer, the original idea for this is by a guy called DM the first doing a Discord uh, call. So the design, construction, scripting is mine, but the original idea definitely belongs to him. I don't think I would have thought of it. So uh, yeah, what we're doing here is that we have two sets of batteries. So this and this is one set, this and this is another set. Um, when you build a battery, it starts out with 300 kilowatt hours of energy. So what we're doing is we are draining all the energy from one set of batteries. Once it is gone or just before it's gone, we switch to the other set, grind the first set down, use the well, use the power on the second set, rotate the first set into some welders, weld them back up, keep running on the second set until they're done, switch back to the first set, so on and so forth. And batteries give all the components back when you grind them down apart from the power cells. So the rest of the system is basically for constructing these power cells. And here we go on the grinding and the switching. Um, but yeah, power cells need nickel, iron, and silicon, and you get all of that from refining stone. Hence why it runs on stone. And I actually think it is better than hydrogen by a far margin, which I'll get into in a little bit. Um, so yeah, now this is, is, is quite a monster. Uh, again, 280 megawatts output. We're powering 16 large atmospheric thrusters, 100% power using 96% of our power. Uh, but it is scalable. Uh, if you look over here, we have a small 24 megawatt version with its basic assembler and refinery. And uh, that is also completely self-contained. Now, what I want to do is, uh, well, I built this thing before I wrote the script. After writing the script, I realized that I can kind of make this a bit more well, script based. So you would have to build the batteries and like one fourth of the grinders and welders for something like this and then the rest would be handled by the script so it would take over your refineries and assemblers when it needed to construct the power cells and feed the thing so it would be a lot simpler to build and also provide feedback to you uh, but but yeah i'm getting ahead of myself i'll go into like future ideas for the script at the end of the video what i want to do now is i want to pop over to a ship that jam the first built which he has uh, well, built long before this video, but he uh, stuffed this power plant into it. And then I'll fly that a bit around while I explain why this makes sense, why I think it is a lot better than hydrogen in uh, almost every way. Uh, of course, there are some downsides, but uh, yeah, it makes a lot of sense and I'll show you why. So uh, let's pop over there. All right, this is the ship built by JM the Fuss. Uh, I believe it was originally made to be a hovercraft kind of deal uh, in a winter climate, hence the whiteness and the large wheels at the base. It has since been adapted to flying around as well as having my power plant kind of deal in the back. So what I want to do now is I want to fly a bit around in this and uh, just demonstrate that we can lift 4,000 plus tons uh, using that as well as explaining why this makes sense, why it makes sense to use stone instead of hydrogen and why I think it is far superior. So uh, yeah, flying around with no issues, running a stone. All right, so a hydrogen. Well, actually, let's start with a uh, count comparison so we have 280 megawatt output on this if you want to do that with hydrogen generators you need 56 of them uh, that's going to be repetitive that's going to be a lot of conveyors a lot of tanks a lot of o2 h2 generators and so on and so forth but even if we disregard that completely stone still makes a lot more sense so a large hydrogen engine will output five megawatts it will consume a thousand liters of hydrogen per second doing that and that adds up to 720,000 liters of hydrogen per megawatt hour. If we compare that to a battery, uh, we start out with 300 kilowatt hours per battery. We're gonna store, cost stack that up, adding up the capacities. But that adds up to about 15 kilowatt hours per power cell. Now with ice, that gives us 10 liters of hydrogen per ice, per kilogram of ice. 
So that is 72,000 kilograms of ice per megawatt hour. With power cells that become 1,666.7 kilograms per megawatt hour. So already their energy storage in uh, the raw form, semi-raw form, is much better. If we then look at the components for this power cell, we drop quite a bit because Keen doesn't believe in conservation of mass. So we get 288.9 kilograms uh, per megawatt hour. That is already a uh, improvement of about <laughs> 250 times compared to uh, storing ice. If we then move on to the complete raw material stone, we are at about 9,260 kilograms per megawatt hour, which is still almost eight times better than ice. Uh, and that number is also dependent on you using yield modules, four of them on each refinery to double your yield. Otherwise, it will be, uh, well, double that, so 18,500 18, kilograms per megawatt hour, which is still a good three times plus some, uh, more than three, three and a half uh, times better than ice. Then we have the argument of the storage, because when you store hydrogen, it doesn't weigh anything. A large hydrogen tank will weigh the same whether it is full of hydrogen or whether it's empty, which is also kind of an oversight on Keen's side, but uh, let's ignore that. The thing with the large hydrogen tank is that it weighs quite a lot, empty or not, it weighs 8,161 kilograms. Uh, that is a lot more than both a large car container and specifically a small car container. So what we can do as a comparison here is that a large hydrogen tank filled with hydrogen has uh, a potential energy of uh, 6.9 megawatt hours. Between the hydrogen tank and the small car container, we get about 7.5 tons in different. If we take um, and fill those 7.5 tons, so the small car container and the large hydrogen container uh, weighs the same, then the small hydrogen container will actually contain 26 megawatt hours. So almost four times as much energy. And that benefit only increases as we go up because if you want more hydrogen uh, storage, well, you need to add another hydrogen tank. You have now doubled your mass or of course your energy, but with the small car container, you can just keep filling it up, I think those 7,500 kilograms of ingots will take up like 1 15th of the capacity in uh, the, 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 the small car container. So we can just keep stacking out like that. Now, gotta mention that these numbers take into consideration that I'm running a 3x world, so 3x assembler efficiency. Most worlds, well all worlds are made like that and standard unless you uh, go ahead and change it. Uh, on world creation and I'm also running yield modules as I mentioned on my uh, refineries so yeah but even if we take those things into consideration even if we go and run a 1x world with zero yield modules you will still get better numbers than hydrogen and um, so yeah it makes sense of course it can even get close to uranium the uranium is just insane that's like less than less than one kilogram of uranium uranium is uh, one megawatt hour so it is several hundred times more efficient than my system here um so yeah what i want to do with the last part of the video i want to skip over i made a survival craft with a drilling tower and everything uh, apart from it uh, being flying now because why not since we have power everywhere i mean the whole planet made of stone, the asteroids are made of stone, the moons are made of stone. We can get power everywhere. We don't have to look for it in ice or uranium and search for that. We can just drill into a rock and have power for days. So uh, yeah, I'm going to pop over to that and I'm going to show that drilling while talking a bit about what I want to do with the scripts as I go forward. So uh, yeah, let's do that. All right, here we go. So this is my newfangled survival-esque uh, base with uh, a power plant uh, copy of the original in here and flying of course so let's pop outside bunch of atmospherics and um, because it is a heavy craft especially when we get some stone into it uh, so yeah let's just set mining up on this it's probably going to crash while i'm talking because it's going to gain a lot of mass from stone 
But uh, yeah, let's just power up the drilling rig and uh, get some stuff. Got to get a bit closer to the ground so we don't have to wait for the drill to get down. I really should add a camera so it would adjust its speed by itself, but uh, oh well. I actually want to show you the display that is part of the scripts. There we go. So it should be getting stone and it is. So as you can see down here, well here we have breakdown of the energy. So total energy, how much stored in batteries, power cells, in ingots, and in stone. Um, I'm not sure why the ingots are not popping up. I do believe I turned something off. Yeah. In any case, you can see we are getting quite a lot of energy in a very short time. We're already 13 megawatt hours up, 14, 16, and so on. That is also part of what I want to develop more in the script. So right now it is basically requiring and having its own assemblers and refineries um, and works as a kind of closed system. What I want to do is I want to expand it. So you basically just have to build the power generating part. You have to build the battery banks, uh, the rotor and some welders and grinders, a lot fewer than there are here. I, I think I got it to where we could use, I think it was four welders and four assemblers, uh, four welders and four grinders total. Um, so yeah, but I want the player to be able to only set that up and then the script will like say, okay, okay, you have like five assemblers and three refineries, they each have this many speed modules, they each have this many yield modules, therefore, you can produce enough stuff for this many batteries. So you can build that if you want more, you've got to build more infrastructure. And uh, yeah, just let the player do what they will with that information. Um, I already got that bit working in the script actually, I just have to kind of develop it further. And upon uh, yeah getting uh, set up, it would then like, Okay, I need more uh, power cells. Therefore, I'm just gonna I'm gonna save your construction queue, and then I am gonna produce a bunch of power cells. And once the power cells have been produced, produced, I will put your construction queue back in. You know, so it'll just hijack your system whenever it needs uh, to produce some stuff, uh, instead of having everything dedicated and locked off and just. Well, it adds to the mass of the system. It, it, it becomes mass that is only used to generate power. And uh, that is a bit silly, I think. Um, so yeah, and as you can see, we are now up at almost 5,000 tons and we are still flying with this thing, uh, using barely 50% of the available power. And we have gotten over 130 megawatt hours of uh, stone power. Keep in mind that a large battery i think it's four meta megawatt hours see four one megawatt hour so it must be four in the large batteries um so what that that's like 30 large batteries at full power are worth of energy we got there from from just drilling a little bit um i just don't think that can be beat by um, hydrogen at all you, you need to use uranium to do something better than this. Obviously, there is a, kind of the bar to entry. You have to build this system up. You, you have to build the rotors, the grinders, the welders, the batteries and stuff like that, the projector and set that up and get it going. Plus, it is more of a binary system uh, compared to hydrogen. So here you basically need the materials for one set of batteries, in this case, 1400 energy cells. Um, or you're not getting any power, it will not, well, it, it will probably switch over, but you will lose capacity, you will not be able to run a full power and just run for less time. If you have fewer power cells, you need them all or nothing, where with hydrogen, you can just have a little bit of hydrogen and then run at complete full power uh, just for a short amount of time. Uh, this is not doable here, but um, yeah, I think that is the main downside. So the, the barrier 20 in regards to construction, although all the parts needed can be constructed from stone, so you can make it with a survival kit. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be using this on my future builds, uh, definitely. 
I'm gonna refine it a bit, uh, of course, so I'm not spamming uh, welders and grinders, but apart from that, I think it's very viable. And it makes a lot of sense, uh, power-wise, just look at all that fuel just waiting to be harvested. Right, I think that is enough about my stone power uh, rant. Um, so yeah, if you have come this far, I applaud you. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it was useful or at least interesting to you. If you have any re questions regarding this or spacing news in general, feel free to ask in the comments below. If you want blueprints of anything featured in this, say so, although you may have to yeah, ask uh, if you want the DM the fastest uh, ship, I guess. Um, but yeah, I'm not really willing to share. I I am willing to share the script as well, uh, though it will have to be shared alongside the power plant structure because it's kind of hard coded, not completely, but uh, to a large extent it's hard coded, so it kind of needs to go along with that. Um, so if you want those, uh, say so, and I'll share on the workshop. Right, thank you all for watching, see ya.